Time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by Stop It, Spray Deodorant, Poof, There Goes Perspiration, and Finette, the Flowing Cream Shampoo. Yes, time now for What's My Line? Now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left, a young man who stars scintillatingly in his own television show five nights a week on another network, Mr. Steve Allen. Thank you, Dorothy. Thank you. Thank you very much. And on my left, one of the lovely ladies show on another network, Talent Patrol, Arlene Francis. Uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and on my left, substituting for our Bennett Surf, is a man who is hysterically amusing all of his audiences at one man show at the Golden Theater, has been called back here by popular demand, Mr. Victor Borga. <laughs> Thank you very much. And on my left, the great scholar, <laughs> <laughs> the great scholar and commentator, Mr. John Charles Daly. Thank you, Victor. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Once again tonight, some good folks have come to visit, brought with them some interesting occupations with which we intend to give the panel and Mr. Borges some trouble. We'll have some uh, famous guest challenger here to meet you a little bit later on, but right now it's time for the experts to meet our first challenger whose job they have to spot. Will you sign in, please, sir? Nils. Brecke, is that right, sir? That's right. How are you? <laughs> Mr. Brecke, where are you from? Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. Well. Very nice of you to come all this way to see us. And I dare say you uh, will be happy that you did when you've met the panel. So why don't you go over and meet them? Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Brecky. Howdy. Thank you. Can I feel your muscle? Uh -uh. Thank you. All right, Mr. Brecky, bring all that muscle over here and put it down next to me, if you will, please. Mm -hmm. And uh, at this point, I think perhaps you know, we give the panel one free guess as to what your line may be. We always begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think he's an FBI man. An FBI man, Mr. Allen. I think he's a fencer. Miss Francis. I think he's an MC in a nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> he might he has to be strong in Washington <laughs> to be a <laughs> That's not necessarily germane. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mr. Brecky, and at the same time, we'll tell them what his line is. But the panel's got to dig. Brecky, I think you know what happens from here on in. Every time you can fling a no back at the panel, why, we'll flip one of these cards. We'll keep the score here. <laughs> Ten flips, and you've won the game. You all ready, sir? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Brecky is self-employed. With that, let's begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Mr. Brecky, do you deal in services? Yes, I do. Uh, do both men and women employ your services or enjoy them? Yes, they do. Would you say that they enjoy them? Yes, yes, I do. <coughs> yes. Mm. Uh, Some do more than others. <laughs> do you perform your services for more than one person at a time? Yes. The services over which he has general supervision are performed for more than one person at a time. Uh, do you work indoors at all? Yes, I do. Would you say you work chiefly indoors? Yes. Uh, do you have occasion to touch people in your work? No. One down and nine to go. Mr. Allen. You uh, walk with a rather springy step and you seem somewhat muscular. Would that possibly have any relation whatever to what you do for a living? <laughs> no. I don't think it has a direct relation in this case, Steve. Two down and eight to go, Miss Fenton. Seems too bad. <laughs> Uh, do you have anything whatsoever to do with the entertainment industry? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes it's entertaining and sometimes it isn't, huh? We all have that problem. Uh, would you say that, uh, do you have any people working underneath you in any way? 
that again, Arthur. No. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You must work on the first floor then. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Well, I think we, we will withdraw the no answer. I think Mr. Brecky will agree that as uh, someone who is self-employed, that uh, there is a... Well, I want to thank you. That's perfectly all right. Uh, I don't know why I'd say it, but go right ahead. The question didn't really mean anything anyway. I'm trying to fill a little time here. Uh, do people... Are you ever yourself involved in performing in any way? Once. <laughs> oh, you didn't make good enough. <laughs> Once, but you are not considered a performer? No. And yet your work has something to do with the entertainment medium? Sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, if you yourself are not a performer, do you aid in any way other people who are performers? Yes. Would you be considered a director or a producer of any kind? No. That took care of you. Three Good luck, Victor. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Bogger. Do you have any connection with any investigation party? No. That's not so entertaining. Well, that's a six to go. That's the well, issue you. them on television. <laughs> they were very entertaining. I'd like to know who has something to do in Washington without being in the investigating <laughs> business. No investigating here. Sorry, Victor. Miss Gilgallon, four down at six to go. Uh, Mr. Brecker, do you consider that whatever it is you do is in the field of the lively art? I wouldn't think so. Five down and five to go, Mr. Allen. Could the health be affected in any way? No. Six down and four to go, Miss French. Not even if you overdid it. Huh? Uh, the people at work for you, uh, would they be more actively inclined to be in the entertainment world rather than you? or some branch of it? Sometimes. Uh, do you have anything to do with uh, getting people jobs that are in the entertainment world? Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. This is the sometime Things are not very good in Washington. Uh, would you, would people come to you for the services of someone that you might handle? Yes. Would you be considered in any way an agent for these people? Yes. Well, are you an agent? Do you get 10%? <laughs> <laughs> no. No? no. Actually, I you would say this. I think that, that uh, Arlene, you deserve a qualified answer, that in a general sense, Mr. Brecker might be considered an agent, yes, but that is not hmm. fundamentally his uh, occupation. Well, do you handle people in a nice way, of course, <laughs> Mr. Brecker? <laughs> Try to. You handle people, you're not an agent. I can't is, think of what you might be. Well, he is not an agent in the accepted term, for instance, that the five of us would understand an agent. Do you handle any kind of would? <laughs> yes. Would you be an, um, uh, like an employment agency of any kind? And understood meaning. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Bogger. Uh, Miss Francis asked if you were... Uh, in the 10% business, may I ask, uh, are you in a business at uh, lower than 10%? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in the business I think you're referring to. <laughs> well, I didn't ask a special question. I mean, this was just, I'm feeling my way through. Um, am I the one to ask questions now anyway? Go ahead, Victor. Uh, um, uh, do you have something to do with the government no. Eight down and two to go, Miss Kilgallen. The people that you handle, Mr. Brecker, do audiences come to see them? Yes. Do they pay admission? Usually no. But sometimes they might, right? Yes. Uh, are these people ever in the classification of lecturers? <laughs> Could no. we have a conference? Nine down and one to go. I'll give you ten seconds for a conference. What part of you may handle, like, models or something that doesn't Yes, that's public. true. A model agency here. Well, try it. What are All you right, nice. Done. Lose, One please. to go, Mr. Allen. Thinking <laughs> by that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mighty, you preach in advance to the audience. I beg your pardon, Steve. Fair question. <laughs> I say, judging by the gasp from the audience, I guess the girls were on the right track when they said oh, models yeah. or something of that sort. Yes. Well, then you sort models. <laughs> <laughs> you what? 
I don't know. That's what I find <laughs> trying to find out. For, uh... Let's... Ah, <laughs> what is it, Steve? Owns and operates a model agency. That's it. Beating all around the bus. That's what it is. Where is this, Mr. Becker? Where do you do that? This is at the uh, Patricia Stevens Agency in Washington. In Washington. That's, uh, you see, we pulled a fast tonight. We got somebody up from Washington who does this so that you wouldn't be able to recognize him. Mm. Mr. Brecky gave you a good like deal They like models trouble. in Washington. Got a good, good <laughs> prize in there. Thanks, sir, for that's bringing that's a very that's tough that's one to the panel. Nice to see you and watch my life. <laughs> All right, panel, now let's see what you can do with another challenger. Will you sign in, please, ma'am? Cecil. Salomon. Salomon, is that right? <laughs> is it Miss or Missy? Missy. Well, Mrs. Salomon, where are you from? I'm from Escondido, California. Escondido, California. Well, uh, you've come a very long way, but there's a chap over on the panel that knows California probably as well as you do, Steve Allen. So why don't you go meet all of them, huh? Miss Salomon. Hi. Hi. Come over here and sit down next to me. The panel gets one free guess as to what your line may be because they've had a chance to meet you very briefly. We always begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think she's the mayor of Escondido. Escondido. Escondido, rather. Mr. Allen. I think she makes pottery out there. Miss Francis. I think she fits foundation garments. Mr. Bogger. I think she hunts gorillas in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. Well, let our viewers at home have a further look at Mrs. And Sullivan. <laughs> and at the same time, we'll tell them what her line is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mrs. Sullivan, you know the rules, I think. Every time you give them no, I flip a card. Ten no's, the game is yours. Mrs. Sullivan is self-employed. And let's begin the general questioning with Victor Bogger. <laughs> That's not fair. That's not fair. Thank you. Uh, everybody's entitled to an opinion. Now, uh, is what you make, is that a product? Yes. You have to do with a product, I mean, right? Yes. A product. Good. <laughs> I take from the audience reaction that it is something that must be kind of funny. <laughs> what, is that? what are we talking about? Assumption, yes, please. Thank you. I can go on? Now? Yes. <laughs> well, is if I put that product on my head, would people laugh? <laughs> yes. If that product, I um, have a whole new approach to this. Have you heard of that? <laughs> I hope you're all listening now. <laughs> if that product were found in my home, would it be extended from the ceiling or rather from standing on the floor rather than be extended from the ceiling? <laughs> back and put that, if this were found in your home, would it be found standing on the floor rather than extending from the ceiling? Yeah, because I don't want to get a no on can it be found in the home. <laughs> well, I think Mrs. Solomon would agree that if it were found in your home, it would be standing on the floor rather than extending from the ceiling. That makes it easy because yeah. we just moved into a new house. <laughs> Well, um, it has to be, we have no furniture. It has to be either my wife or myself. <laughs> Is it very pretty to look at? Is it very pretty to look at? Yes. I don't think we can give him that. No. Then it must be me. I think <laughs> by those definitions of beauty as we generally understand them, you'd get a no answer on that. Well, I'm off your but I, at least I know it's not a hat now. <laughs> Well, it wasn't what? funny when you put it on your head, so... What time to go, Miss Gilgallan. Thank you, Richard. Uh, is this a useful product? Yes, it yes. is. Uh, it has a, what you might call a rather specialized use? 
Does it have a rather specialized... It's not thing? something that everybody needs every day, like a toothbrush? Well, it's, it, uh, it, it's not specialized. I mean, I would say that you don't necessarily need it every day, no. Well, that's all I want to know. Yes, I don't see uh, how I could hook you with that. Is this something that most people have come in contact with? Yes. Yes, one way or another, don't you see? Yes. Is it hmm. portable? <laughs> yes, you can move it around, can't you? Hmm? It's portable. <laughs> oh, it's nice. right. Sometimes. Well, is it larger than a bread box? Yes. Uh, is it uh, something that both men and women would use? Yes. Would either sex use it more than the other sex? No. No, I don't think so. Not necessarily. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Allen. In a two-story home, might it be found upstairs? <laughs> no. No, that's three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Would it be found outside of the house? Yes. Would it be more usually found outside of the house? Yes. Uh, does it have any moving parts? <laughs> yes. Is it alive in any way? Member of the animal kingdom? Yes. Is it a uh, four-legged animal? Yes. Is it a, uh, 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 in any way would it be considered other than a tame animal? Mm, in, would it at any uh, say that would it again? be considered other than a tame animal as a I rule? have to have a conference I have to have an animal uh, maybe I should have said other than a domestic animal that'll make it easier you've lost mm. him I've lost him to that Mrs. Solomon and I can understand why <laughs> I would say this Arlene you may want to quibble about this later on but in this specific category with uh, regard to its relation to Mrs. Solomon we'd have to give you a no on that That's John you did hear my correction although you were talking to Mrs. Solomon I just said is it other than a domesticated animal is what I meant yeah that, that's what I thought you said and it, it is not <laughs> other than a domesticated that's animal that's right far down and six to go Mr. Morgan it is established as an animal with four legs yes anybody you know <laughs> <laughs> It couldn't be. He doesn't live in California. He <laughs> <laughs> doesn't play piano, I guess. <laughs> it is bright, uh, bigger than a bread box. Yes, it is. Well, I haven't seen pretty big bread boxes. I haven't seen... <laughs> <laughs> is it found in a zoo? It might be. I think we'd have to agree that there is a zoo that might have it, yes. Now, we are trying to find out what this animal is or what Miss Solomon does with it. Both. Both? Yeah. Complicated. That's very complicated. <laughs> if you will tell me what it is, I can tell you what she does with it. <laughs> no? I tell you what she does with it, then you tell me what it is. Okay, that's a deal. <laughs> All right, I'll take you. That uh, raises it. Now, you go from there. She raises it. Yeah. <laughs> Is this animal uh, distinct from uh, other animals on account of a certain scent? <laughs> Mrs. Solomon has made a very good point. She says they all have different scents. All right, so the answer is yes. <laughs> I'm going to give you 20 seconds. <laughs> Is this an uh, animal that can be eaten? It, it, edible? Edible? Yes, it's edible. It's edible. Well, is it an animal that is usually served in restaurants or on menus? <laughs> well, they put it on a in, plate usually, but sometimes they bring it. No, in general, is, yes. it, is, is it an animal you, you find very often in a restaurant? Yeah. On yes. the table? Yes. Cut up, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you one, 30 seconds more, Victor, because we... Okay, well... Um, is this animal... There must be something strange about that animal. All right, you didn't have laughter. <coughs> I don't think so, Victor. It's just you. Not if it's edible. Well, what? Not if it's edible if it and it's edible? four legs. How strange can it be? Yeah, well, who ate these four legs? <laughs> well, I've had. Boy, the time is up. I'm going to flip them all. I'm afraid you were getting close, but still it would take you a good deal longer to find out. Mrs. Solomon, this going to surprise you, was a hog breeder. Oh! I don't think you've ever done it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
And Mr. Salomon has asked that we give her a prize to the March of Dimes, and it will be done. In just a moment, we'll meet tonight's Miss. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. The panel would recognize our guest, as most of you are going to immediately, so the panel has been provided with blindfolds. Are they all in place, panel? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Good. Yes. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? Celebrity, we dispense with all of the usual preliminary questioning. We get right down to the general questioning, and you have something less than five minutes to reach your goal. Uh, let's begin this questioning with Steve Allen. Are you in show business? Yes. You are a man, I take it. Yes. From the audience's reaction, I would guess that you're used to making people laugh. Is that correct? One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Oh, you're more the serious type, are you? No. <laughs> well, I will say this in the context, Miss Arlene, as distinct from being a comedian, yes. Uh, would you uh, consider yourself a leading man? No. It's, oh. As connotations of the theater, I think, would get you a no. <laughs> Two down and eight to go, Mr. Borger. I'm not going to know who he is. He's not going to know who I am. <laughs> All right, Victor, we have less than three minutes to go now to try and get our... <laughs> What's the you are in show business? Yes. You are not a comedian? No. Sounds like it. <laughs> are you connected with music in show business? Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, from the stage, mm -hmm. you perform on stage. Mm -hmm. But do you sing? Mm -hmm. What's that? No or yes? That's yes. <laughs> Was that an example? <laughs> <laughs> Are you the a young singer that the 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 uh, Bobby Soxers are crazy about? I think this would be embarrassing for our guest to answer, so I will have to take the measure of that and say distinctly yes. What's so embarrassing about it? <laughs> <laughs> Modesty becomes one. Well, I think I have brought us kind of far this time. <laughs> <laughs> I think this should be a standard thing, this beard here, you know? <laughs> and I will leave it to... My good colleague, Miss Kilgallen, to guess the name. All right, Miss Dorothy. Smarter than I am. Miss Dorothy. You want to be a Dorothy? Okay. Um, are you primarily a singer then? Mm hmm. More a singer than an actor? Mm hmm. Uh, are you a baritone? Mm hmm. Are you um, the type that uh, uh, ha makes records that are on jukeboxes? I hope so. Uh, have you a big hit now, one in the top ten? Mm-mm. No, God. Uh, Three down and seven to go, Mr. Allen. Are you over 25? Mm-mm. Four down and six to go, Miss Arlene Francis. You're under 25? <laughs> well, come back and you're over. <laughs> we only have about a minute to go, panel. Uh, have you sung on television? Mm-hmm. Are you known as a television personality? Mm-hmm. Uh, do you ever act with your singing? Sometimes. Do you have your own? Mm -hmm. Is that sometimes too? Well, it, no, I guess has his own show, period. You have your own show, period. That's too bad. <laughs> uh, is it a variety show? I don't think we can call it a variety show and we run out of time. Oh, Too bad, panel. You, I think you're getting very close, but if you take your masks off, you will see that our guest tonight is Julius La Rosa. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Next week, for the first time, we will have three beautiful young ladies on the panel when Miss Deborah Carr comes in to substitute for our friend Mr. Bennett Cerf, who is still vacationing in the West. Our thanks to Victor Bogie for being our guest tonight. And until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Dorothy. Good night, Steve. Good night, boys. Hurry, Deborah, and good night, Arlene. <laughs> <laughs> good night, everybody, and good night, Victor, dear. It was nice to have you again. Thank you, Arlene. Good night. Mr. Daly. <laughs> Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Life. <laughs> this has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Parkman production.